The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. How's it happening here on this Friday, the 21st of July? Getting very close to wrapping up the month, and we'll be looking at monthly uh, bars uh, in the moment in different indices. So, this is really important for me. On a purely technical basis, this is Technical Friday, so we're going to be doing, doing, doing this in a kind of a technical way. 35,372 was the high ye uh, yesterday with a champ wave inverted green Roman candle. And what that means is if we can trade above 35,300, was in my work, uh, more, for more than 60 minutes, I said to subscribers to my opening call, then there's a chance of retesting the high of 35,372. What I didn't add, because I really wanted to let the day play out and want to have any pre presuppositions or anything like that, is that if there is a close below yesterday's low, and for two out of the next three days we close below that low, we have made at least a near term, not even a short term, just a near term top. Uh, that's 35,091. Let's just say 35,090. A close below that today, I'm not sure that's going to happen. I'm just saying because it's options as well, expiration plus the rebalancing. So this is the daily chart. We're always looking in the uh, Chapman Wave methodology for a – let me see if I can do this now. I don't want to mess anything up. I'm working on one computer. There it is. So we're always looking to uh, – wait, I can't do that, huh? Hmm. All right, just a minute. Oh, I can't do that, though. Here we go. I, I, I don't want to mess around. <laughs> Things are working right now. Anything can happen. We always try to identify the lowest low bar and count each successively highest peak, going from a buy signal upgraded to a buy mode with the implication that there should be at least four higher peaks. You can go higher, but the minimum is to expect four higher peaks in that particular time frame. So we've got the low of 32,586 on the 26th of May. And what do we get? We peak at peak A, make it gray peak B, and then it gets upgraded to a buy, buy mode from a buy signal, being it should go to a D. Lo and behold, it goes to a D at 34,588 on the 16th of June. And then it pulls back, and there we had a red inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle. But there, there was really, there was just momentary negative news. Remember, we came plunging down, had a second Roman candle. Now, this is an inverted green one. It has the same implication, but it's a little bit stronger. It means it's happened on the upside, and it's still in an upside trajectory. So in this particular instance, what we're looking at is 35, uh, up 37, at 35,263, we've got your leg D. Remember, this is a floating letter. And I'm just may I'll, I'm going to change this to gray so you can see. I'll change it to blue. This is a floating letter. This stays a leg D until there is a lower high. So if today we don't have a move up above 35,372.77, if we get to 77, it's still leg D. If the high today's uh, 35, 372.78, we've extended leg D. That's that's the most important thing. But look at this. The price is way above the nine period moving average in the daily chart. The nine is way above the 14. The MACD is still expanding. The stochastic's flat at 91. But the on-balance volume hasn't been really proving. There hasn't been a volume acceleration to the upside. It's been a very nice straight move, but not going to an overbought situation. Unless I do this, I squeeze this by going like that. And look what happens. All of a sudden, you've got the nine period moving average looking a little bit more, um, a little bit more overbought. So that said to me, that if there was any way that we were going to take, uh, take a position on the short side, 
it's a process that you've got to be looking at because to turn for the green to turn down and go under the black period moving average, that's the 14 period moving average, you'd probably have to see 34,200. That's a thousand points or at least 800 points of the downside with bad news. It's not good enough that you just get the price move. So this would be on a very near term basis, kind of a, a way of assessing whether or not there's internal strength, enough residual strength and internal strength to push higher as a breakout. It's also a straight leg up. And that's really important because it says at worst, you've got to be cautious and think, you can go a little higher, but you've really set the boundaries with 34,900, uh, probably 34,800 as near-term support. But that would start the process of that nine-period moving average starting to come down. And so it's a process. Look what happened here in the process. It got, since it crossed positive back on the um, 5th of June, this nine-period moving average has not gone negative. It's getting a little overextended in time, but that does it doesn't. Oh. Okay, so with that said, I've just got a, a, a message to say. Let me just see if I, what I've got here is that. Um, hmm. I don't see anything. Oh wait, is that for me? Let me just check. Oh yeah, we have Charlie in Framingham. Charlie, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you, Basil? I'm very good. What would you like to look at? India fund, IFN symbol. I'm looking to buy this for its 10% yield. Oh, this is, uh, uh, wait, that's the indie fund? Is that what you're talking about? India fund, yes. Yeah, so it gives you a yield as well. What kind, What's the yield you say? 10 point something percent. Okay, so let's do two things. First of all, when something gives you a rather, I wouldn't say excessive, but that's in the starting to get to the rather excessive side of yields, the 10% in this day and age, I'm always a little bit suspicious. That's not to say it can't happen. I know people, I know someone who sent me a note uh, maybe eight months ago about a gold stock that was trading with a was it 13 or 14 percent yield and this and the company is still in business so these things can happen this is not a company this is the india fund that india fund is not going out of business at all now what is interesting about the uh, the chart itself the chart is suggesting that we've got a trading band between uh, maybe a little bit higher the high that was made on the uh, 19th that was three days ago is 17.59 and the low that I'd be looking at is really important support to hold over the next uh, two to three weeks is 16.27 so that's a point so when it comes it doesn't matter because you're buying for the yield in a sense, you're not worrying about the, the price as long as the company, in this case, the country, stays solvent. Isn't that it? That's, that's really what we're looking at, right? That's good. Okay. So we've got a break coming up. I'm just going to do a little bit of my chat wave notation on this. And as soon as I return, I'll think about that. I did not realize it was such a big deal. I'll be back with Johnny and Framing and looking at IFN. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're on with Charlie and Framing M. Mass, and we're looking at IFN. And IFN, and this is going to be fascinating because um, it's, a, it's the India Fund. India is not going out of business. So this should keep going. So I'm going to say I did some work with it uh, during the break. Um, I've got an alternate counting because it was I don't have to go into it in, in detail in terms of what you're looking at because it's it's not as relevant as it should be normally. Um, but I do have an instant restart. So I'm calling this a peak E that we've got right now in the daily chart. So it could pull back. But if it pulls back, although you're fixing in your yield, the yield would go even higher. So I'm going. To, if you don't have this as a major part of a portfolio, if it is just part of a portfolio, because it's a it's the India fund and India's. I mean, there's no question about it that it's going to be around for a little while. Um, I'm going to say yes. I think it's it's doable, but I would put it. I would not. I put the amount of money you prepare to risk. You've still got to look at it as if there's a chance that uh, something could happen with the yield. They could also say that, look, uh, the price is going down. We're going to whatever it is or the price is whatever they, can, they want to say they can say in terms of changing the price of the of the of the yield, um, as far as I can tell. But I think, yes, I'm going to say yes to you in the sense that uh, if it was a if it was a company, for instance, someone in the den uh, said that, which is uh, uh, that's a Norwegian tank uh, tanker, um, <coughs> has a very has a higher yield of about twelve or thirteen percent. That's a little different. There, there is risk, but in your case, I I'd say this this is something that um, I think you've done your homework. If you feel comfortable as a part of your portfolio, I'm going to say yes. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, and and only other thing is that I would just monitor the price if at any point it starts to go down to under the 15 area over the next three, four months. They might change the actual price of the year, but if you're locked in 10%, then that's fine. So I hope that helps okay. you. 
Thank you very much, Charles. Okay, and I do have a, a target in the shorter term, which is very close, 1776, and it's almost there. That's where you should see. That's about right now is where you should start to see some resistance. So have a great day. Have a great weekend. Thank you very much Thank for you. calling, Charlie. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, folks, let me do this. I want you to show you the same thing now. So what I'll show you, the Dow is going to have to be a process for that nine-period moving average to pull back. The S&P right now is up 12 at 45.47. <clears throat> I'm calling this a leg F. It could be an alternate count. I just decided everything's positive right now, but it is rather extended in the sense that there's a gap and it's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is the ninth session after the gap. So I'm suspecting at some point the 45, uh, sorry, the 44. 54 to 44, 44 area is going to be tested when I write at this point, if I do a left side rise at price time match, I'm still saying this, the last week or, or so going into the first week of August, my anticipation is that this choppiness is going to continue. The QQQ has come back a little bit after being uh, had, a, had a good opening, pull back and now it's up 1.04. At 377.79, key. It's got two gaps. It hasn't filled the first gap, and that first gap, the high of the bar, is 374.19. So the 374s will be the first area of support that's really important to hold. SMHs, semiconductors pull back. They're uh, now they're up a dollar 18 at 154.05. I was talking about this yesterday, saying I believe that the SMHs, the Van Eck. Semiconductor ETF should be making a PD here. Uh, and because of that, the key support would be in the 154s. It went right through that yesterday, but now it's right in the 154 area. Leg D in the weekly chart. Here the technicals are different. Here the technicals are showing some weakness. And I suspect that the real uh, – someone emailed uh, – texted me last night to say – uh, are we looking at like 130s? I can't remember the price. 130 in the SMHs. No, I don't do things like that. I cannot. I go one step at a time. After all, there's incredible support in the semiconductors from 145 all the way to where we are right now, 153. So all of that has to be taken out. But on any weekly basis, if there is a close under 145, the SMHs are vulnerable to further decline. Looking at the... Um, IWM, the Russell 2000, which was leading for a while. Now it's kind of after the little doji candle at a peak D three days ago. It's kind of stalling. It's not breaking down. It's up 10 cents at 195.19. I just put the, I'd call it stalling. The MACD is good. Stochastics 92%. On balance volume is a little bit overbought. Nine period is acting well. It's way above the 14. Price is way above the nine. Everything's good. Weekly chart is good. So in all these circumstances, what we're looking at here is the potential for some kind of a digestive phase to be taking place. But if we don't get bad news, that's bad economic news. And what do I mean by that? I mean news that the market perceives as negative. That's the only thing. If the market says, uh oh, the same news yesterday could be fine. Today, the same news could be bad. It's the way the market perceives it. So far, the market is not taking anything too, ser too seriously in terms of negativity. Hey, this is what I want to look at. The TLT. Look at the TLT. Stuck in the range. I've been saying that forever. It's like a broken record. Stuck between 98 and 100. Well, now it's a little bit low. It's that midpoint of the, of the rectangle, 105. We're there. As long as we stay there, Yields are in the upper range, but they're not doing very much. Go to the um, dollar, DXY. The dollar right now is at the 14-period moving average. It hasn't touched that since it was there back in early July, about three weeks ago. There is a 26 ticks, not a big deal. 101.09, what is a big deal is that in the arch formation, the lowercase h, I'll do this on Monday. I don't want to change anything right now or Tuesday. <laughs> this lowercase h that becomes a lowercase m in the weekly chart closes underneath the left side lows in the 101 area 
Now what we're looking at is any rally has two bars in which to close above and so far the, the, we've got – it's Friday. We've got until 4 o'clock. It's at 101.09. What's the level we're looking at? We're looking at the level of oh, – <laughs> Didn't want to come up. Oh, there is 100.82. So, yes, 100 and we're, we're about 10 cents above it, which is very good. More importantly, what we're looking at here is the EUR USD made that right here. Leg D in the weekly chart, peak D in the daily chart. So it's pulling back. And that confirms for me that in the short term, there's a chance the dollar can actually start to move up a little bit more and put a little bit of selling pressure to the general market. The USD JPY is up sharply. I'm on the I'll be right back. That was a chap. I can take it. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, uh, question about Mobileye, uh, Mobileye Global, that I believe was an Israeli company. I think they were taken over uh, trading at uh, 40, down 42 cents at 40.64. This has made a peak yet. Yeah, and interestingly enough, it's just perfect for the person who asked me about this, Coda. I know that you've done a lot of work in this methodology. And your question always is, wow, how, how did you get that count again? 
Well, the count that we've got right here, because this is your starting point, where that up arrow is, that particular low at about just under 30, goes to peak A, peak B, peak C, then it stalls. This is a little bit too low down to call it a peak C1, C2, so I keep it intact. But remember, this is your starting point, and your objective is always to count each successively higher peak. Well, that's a peak. That's a gray A, gray B. Then the stochastic goes up over 80%, so that becomes a buy signal to buy mode. That goes to a, a C, blue C, we call it, and then a D. And now it pulls back sharply. So I think this is in a consolidation area. It's already made the D. And it's made a peak C1, C2, C3 in the month in the weekly chart. Monthly chart is spectacular. Move from initially uh, to, uh, a month after its IPO goes from the uh, 25 level all the way to about 57. Pulls uh, 47 pulls back sharply under 30 dollars, and now it's trading at 42. This looks to me like it's making a. I can, I'm going to draw this in again. We'll see what happens. This is a rectangle formation that I'm looking at, and it can stay here for a little while longer. Um, and as soon as it starts to break one of the sides, in other words, as soon as it starts to trade about $48.50, $48.50, that's a big positive. If it starts to break under the 200-period uh, moving average in the daily chart of, of uh, 37, it says, be careful, it's probably going down to retest the 36 low. But in the meantime, gap down, uh, red candle today, I just say, be a little careful. If you're long-term long, hold it. I like it. Uh, I love the way that – I love the MACD action in the monthly chart. It is really strong. Um, so this has internal strength, but I'm looking out a couple of months. So I hope that helps you. Just want to go back to the USDJPY. That is the yen, dollar-yen currency pair. Very nice move to the upside. Very sharp move, in fact. Um, it's up 1.10 percent. This is a currency up 1.10 percent in a day, and up 154, $1.54 at 141.61. I think in the weekly chart it's going to make a leg D at some point above the high that was made at 145.069. Um, and if that's the case, then I'm looking at the dollar showing some re uh, internal strength here. A very. Sh uh, I said internal strength. It really is. It's more residual strength because it's been in such a long-term down mode. And that, that residual strength is, is peripheral. And because the MACD hasn't yet crossed positive, it's close, but it hasn't. It's still very weak. The stochastic's down 19%, 19.99 under, oh, there it is, 20%. I wanted to say, it's got to get into the 20% area. It just did that. So this is, it could have a decent bounce into the midpoint to 103.88, so 104.03. Um, that's the chance. And we'll see what happens. Anytime the um, dollar starts to trade again under 100.8, 37, something like that, 100.42. That's a problem. It's giving up uh, the, the strength. Okay, now let's go through Apple. Uh, wait, I haven't finished uh, crude oil, so let me get there. So Apple, I spoke yesterday. I said a little bit of a double top here, but it did go much higher than the 194.48 level, so you can't consider it as, as a double top per se. It has the characteristic at 198.23. It's given some of that back, but it's not a big deal. But it's this candle that we're looking at on the weekly chart. If this inverted, uh, well, let's call it let's call this um, let's call this candle at the moment because we've still got to wait until four o'clock. But it has got like evening star, a little bit of a hammer, a reverse hammer candle. Um, if there is a lower, whatever the price, the low of, the, of this week is, and so far the low this week has been 191.81. If next week there is a close any day under 190, that's next week, right? That impacts this candle and say, says that this, what might turn out to be a, a doji-type candle, is possibly a reversal candle because it's extremely overbought in the weekly chart on the on-balance volume. What is fantastic 
is that in 91%, the stochastic has been flat. The, the way I'm looking at it is that I think that the daily chart on Apple is going to start, start to weaken. And that as soon as we fill in this gap and the high that we're looking at would be a high of the 14th of July of 191.18. As soon as that high is taken out, isn't that interesting? And the low three days later was 191.81. So you've reversed. You've got 18 and 81. Okay. So if 191 is taken out on a closing basis, Apple will store for a little while longer. All right. Costco was the question I had. Got to look at Costco. Costco, leg D, everything looks fabulous. MACD is good. Stochastic is. Uh, uh, 93%, almost 94% on balance volume is good. So this is a process that we're talking about. Now, we, we might be looking at a situation where we got this rotation going on and within that rotation, it's going to be very interesting to see and look at the weekly chart and look at the monthly chart improving that in the rotation, the Dow might hold a lot better than the others. Uh, and that would also include certain stocks in certain categories. So Costco is in the um, uh, XL, uh, XL, XLP, XLP. No, why am I just suddenly forgetting about the uh, symbol? Oh, yeah, that's the consumer staples. Peak A, peak B. Under that goes peak A, peak B. This is a leg C. And this is the reason why I think it's a process because there are some – key uh, sectors, there are some key stocks that are only in C. They need to pull back and then they need to make that D. So that's the reason why I'm saying this is a, a kind of a slow rollover if it's going to be a rollover at all. But most importantly, my indicator, and we'll see where it is right now, is the semiconductor index, which is now at 153.35. Uh, it's down uh, from the high of the day, but it's still up 40 cents, up 35 cents. Watching this very closely. Um, now I want you to go back to. I don't want to forget anything. I had a question. Uh, where was. Oh, uh, a couple of things that we need to look at, which uh, I think are very important. Uh, I'm going to go there. I'm just scrolling through the questions. I'm on one laptop. I'm trying to do what I can. The five monitors all on one. Okay, yeah. So IAI is very important. That is the broken through the ETF. And it's down to five cents per major recovery. Got to think about that. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So before I forget, I mentioned you this right at the beginning, but of course I didn't do that. And that was to show you the beautiful marsh formation in the uh, E-mini going from the low at 8 o'clock this morning at about 45.70. It just walked the nine-period exponential moving average, went to peak ABCD, then it went ABCD again, then ABCD at a fractional E two bars later, three bars later, and then it pulled back. And then it did left side, right side price time match, not to the high, but to a particular candle uh, around about eight, uh, eight fifty or so. And it came back, and two bars later, it broke that left side low and it went under it. And now we've had a quick peak A, B, C, D. This is the one minute chart of the E mini. And now it's pulled back, and it's possibly, I don't know if it's going to, but it might be making a second lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m second arch. And that's going to make this low at about 45, I shouldn't say about, I should give you the exact figure because it is important. The exact figure is 4364.00. A close below that says you've got to start looking now at the 10-minute um, bar. And the 10-minute bar went to, and I use this right here. Let me just show you the 10-minute bar. So from the low that was made at 4 o'clock yesterday, we went to peak A, B, C, then it pulls back. Takes its time, so it's walking the nine-period moving average. And since yesterday at last night at 21.30, that's 9.30 last night at 45.65.25, this is a 10-minute bar. It stayed green all the way and went to peak A, B, C, D, E, F, pulls back, A, B, C, D, pulls back, alternate account E, A, F, B, and then it goes C, and it makes a perfect D right there at 9.20 this morning, and a pullback very sharply. Now this, this is that, remember 10.20 is when I always say other things start to happen from 10.20. Now we start to see some buying come in. How does that buying impact the rest of the day. And my suspicion is that we're in this process, this kind of rolling over process, and you've got to look at all the indices one by one. And at this particular point, I'd put the most emphasis on the semiconductor. If the semiconductors cannot really make a new recovery high in the next couple of sessions, but instead make lower lows, that at some point is going to impact the market. When is difficult to say. But the IAI is a clue. Look, I was talking about Costco and, and the XL. P, the select uh, consumer staples, ETF, and also in C, and here we got IAI, the iShares broker dealer, e, uh, we, I should mention we are long since 45, way back, way back, way back in 2020. We've had a couple of little trades, but I missed this last big move up for subscribers. I said I wanted to get in, didn't get in, in the 88 area. Yeah, it's almost nine points high at 97.88. This is, would have been a really nice uh, position to get in because it broke that 200 period moving average resistance. It just went right through it, held it for three sessions, stalled, boom. It became a fulcrum for the move up. So this is very positive. So I suspect early next week we get our peak C. 
And then we get a D, and then we're going to see what happens. But that weekly chart says this is not just an ordinary move because it could be still, even if it goes sideways, it could be uh, higher highs to come over the next uh, four, five, six weeks. So this is a big positive. Hood is something, <laughs> talk about a miss. I've been talking about this for three years now, that Hood is something we wanted to buy. Did not get that in entry point below nine. And here it is. Uh, th what is about 30 30 percent higher at 1275. GSAS C starting to become a little bit toppy, but still all the technicals are good. So it's going to be time that pulls it back because there's still internal strength. And I do have this as a leg C in the weekly chart. That's Robin Hood. We hit 85 round number high the second month after the IPO, and it did have a little bit of a pullback. Going down to the low that was made. Remember that all, all the stuff that was going on, especially with the uh, Bitcoin. Oh, I haven't done Bitcoin for a little bit. 6.81 uh, was the low that was made back in June -ish? Yeah, June of 2022. All right. So I just wanted to mention that as well as Schwab. Talk about my inside that that the reversal, <laughs> the 30, 45 round number reversal, the day of March the 13th. Look at this, March the 13th, 45 round number with the Chum Wave price volume climax reversal, but it didn't do everything it should because it should have been 28 days above that high. It was uh, uh, above it. That would have said it can go 56 days above that. Uh, instead, it's done it all, but only after a retest of 45.65 in the big arch formation. What a big move it's had. And it's trading right now at 67, down 85 cents. Possible peak F, just a little bit of a digestive phase occurring right now that we're looking at starting anyway. So I did want to do that. Now, what is, oh, um, spoke about Apple. Uh, oh, Tesla was a question. Tesla, uh, Tesla is trading down. Five, four and a half. It made an alternate account G slash B. 276.99 was the high back in early June. Uh, then uh, later it went to 284.25. And then it just broke this trend line. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't do the trend line correctly. We didn't do that right now. Okay, there we go. Trend line. Aha. It just nicked it to the upside three sessions ago. And now from the high of 299, oh, did it miss 300? They went to 299.29. Just missed 300. 299.29. 299.29. So you can see from everything I'm looking at, even here, look at the technicals. The nine's over the 14. Magni was good. Now it's negative. Stochastic still uh, uh, now it's 63, but it was over 80%. So the, the speed, it's got to be speed. Or it's time duration that turns the nine period moving average below the 14. And right now it is very close, but it's still not negative and a leg C in, in the weekly. So the question is where do I think it's going over the next few weeks or the longer term? And my answer is I think that Tesla is going to go towards the 320 area. But to do that, it has to use this as a containment area. And that takes you to 240 or 238. Let's just say it's at 258 right now. Over the next three weeks, if it breaks and closes under 240, I'd probably have to say 238. Close under 238, it's going to take a lot longer. At this particular point, um, there is enough residual strength in the weekly chart to say it's holding well. If it just can consolidate for a little while, it could then go to a leg D. I do expect that it's going to go to a leg D to make a cup formation from the high that was made earlier last year in a 307 area or something like that. So I'm just looking at this right here. So maybe it makes a cup and a handle going down to the 230s maybe even. Could do that. And then it tries to rally, and that's going to be very important. The next rally for Tesla is going to be extremely important because it has to do with uh, – the, now there are so many factors for Tesla. There's the, um, the whole idea of charging stations being used by others. That means that people who have a Tesla now don't get priority because they have to wait in line. So share it. So there are a lot of things going on site, which now uh, – uh, that
TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So a question came in about, uh, oh, that's MasterCard. I thought I was interested. MasterCard being quite nice to have 148. In fact, uh, American Express which is in the, in the uh, Dow, uh, dropping sharply down 6.56 at 170.65 after its second peak D uh, in the daily chart. And kind of a double topish look in the weekly chart. A monthly chart is holding okay, but uh, we've got to monitor this closely because if American Express pulls back from the low today of 167, uh, below 165, then the 162 and a half area for the 200 pre moving average becomes uh, a target. So let me just do this quickly, Tesla. Did I, did I just do Tesla? Yes, I did. Tesla. Yeah, I just did Tesla. Okay. <laughs> so it's one of those days. Uh, let me just do this quickly. Let's go, go to the Dow. And let me just do this uh, for a sum up of uh, what we're looking at for the rest of the day. Dow's down up 65 at 35,288. It's reluctant to give up anything, and it's going to be real tough for that MACD to turn down and for the stochastic at 92% to turn down. So this is maybe a position that can have a little bit upside. It doesn't have to have very much, but it can hold. But you want to see, if you want to see a rollover, then you need to see lower lows and then lower highs and that hasn't happened yet but i do see enough to say just a little bit toppy right now but the smh is again to be the clue there's some 
SMH has come back a little bit. It's up 31 cents at 153.28. But if the SMHs, the semiconductors, start to move down sharper, then slowly, one by one, the different sectors will fall back. But I'm also, oh, I did. Next on it. Uh, where is it? Uh, down nine cents. I'm watching this closely because if the financials actually give it up, that's a problem. But they can ro- a rotation that hold. Stay tuned for Steve Rhodes. Have a great, lo- uh, great weekend. See you on Monday. And I won't be doing my web or not my video for subscribers until Sunday night, probably. Have a great weekend.